<clears throat> I'm going to let Bob do, because um, he and I discuss this a lot, um, the promo and the beginning of the panel discussion today. Thanks, Mark. Good morning. Good morning. I'm, this is going to be, unfortunately, a little bit quicker than I had anticipated because uh, I'm going to ask if you all just pass those around. Um, my name is Bob Dean, as you know. I spoke with you all in, back in March and, and tried to explain to you the importance of what was taking place with the evolution of the Las Olas Marina project. And what we're handing out right now is a, 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 a rendering of what is the newest concept and what it's evolved to. And what I wanted to do is just give you a real fast overview of where we've been and how we got here because that's where really what's most important about this. This has been a process and it actually started back in 2008, uh, actually a lot longer before that, but 2008 was when the, the momentum began to redevelop uh, Fort Lauderdale Beach. And what we all have to understand is that this marina concept here is actually one piece of a larger puzzle which is being promoted by the city of Fort Lauderdale. And their vision was to develop or, or to, to put money into the beach to try and, and, and redevelop it and to, to become an economic force for the community because it had become quite depressed. The, there's money that was uh, actually collected as part of taxes for a, 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 actually the CRA money. <coughs> All of this has been taking place over a number of years, so this has been an ongoing process and the idea of the marina really didn't come back on board until 2011. Part of that is because of the fact that there was a lawsuit over that property and the city specifically didn't want us making any noise about it because it would jeopardize our position. So the idea of this marina is a relatively new one that's just being brought up. The problem we've had is that this that the process started back in 08 also with the vision of redeveloping the beach and they brought in a, a company called Sasaki and they asked this company to come up with plans on what they would do. Well right now it looks like there's about 10 components of this plan to redevelop the entire beach. And that has been put, in, it's being put into motion. Um, Sasaki was retained by the city. They're now uh, doing the, desi the, the, the design work. It's going before the Central Beach advisory board, they're making recommendations, and we got in on at the last minute, barely got under the wire to get this into the plans. And that's what's so important here. Remember that this is something that happened a long time ago, and this plan was not on the, on the table. So we're now having to fight uphill to get it accepted. Um, there was the, the action, there's a lot of stakeholders in this. We've got the condo boards, we've got the Central Beach Alliance, and of course we've got all of our own marine industry groups and it, what's important to know is that the city is behind this plan. Sasaki has come up with a initial view of what you see here which was presented at, at a, a beach redevelopment board meeting actually about a month ago. <coughs> it's not final. It's, it's a process and uh, I know Paul's going to address the idea of us having more upland development. Um, remember that right now what's been proposed, the existing marina is about 3,400 feet of docks. They're piers. They're not really acceptable to larger boats. Uh, this plan right now takes it up to 6,000 lineal feet of docks. That's significant. The economic impact of this for the city is significant. They're, they've already done the studies. The parking uh, uh, administration within the city has realized that that parking lot that's up land is, is not generating revenue for the city. So we've got a, a good card in this game to build this marina. The second part of this, and, and what's an important component, is that a part of the original plans envisioned a promenade running along there. That's not going to be taken out. That land is going to be there for the people. So we have to understand, we're not going to be building buildings on there. We're not going to be putting in shopping centers or any kind of marine related stuff. That's going to be something that's there for the people and it's not going away. We're going to have to figure out ways of maximizing our marina and, and trying to make this move forward. The other key component of this that, that you all expressed last month was the idea that we had to have a welcome center. That has been embraced by the Marine Advisory Board. It is, it is being made part of the plans. We're not sure how it's going to be incorporated yet. 
One of the things that happened at the last meeting with the, with the beach redevelopment people is that there was a parking garage that had been proposed to be able to handle the parking that was being given up by getting rid of that lot. That part looks like that parking garage is off the table. It won't generate enough revenue to pay for itself. So they've recommended <coughs> surface parking there. These are all complex issues that affect this. And, and like I said, there's a lot of stakeholders. We've got the Venetian condominium across the way that started out totally against this project. They're now coming on board because they realize we are going to have a greenway there. We're not building a four-story par parking garage to block people's views of the intercoastal waterway. So again, we have our ideas of what we want, but we have to be sensitive to what the rest of the community wants also. And it looks like we're getting traction in there, but we need to also keep the pressure on Everyone stay involved and make sure you go to these meetings and let people know what your thoughts are. This, you know, otherwise it's going to go off on its own direction. And that's probably the single most important thing that I want to make sure of. And, and remember, this is all revenue driven. This is economics. This isn't about a wish list of, oh, we want this. If government does it for us, then we'll be happy. you got to pay for it somehow. And fortunately, there is money within a uh, fine. There's a number of grant areas that we're going to be able to make, uh, you get money to help reconfigure the marina and to dredge it. Um, the upland building side of it is a totally different animal. Right now, I don't know how much upland building there's going to be. I know it's proposed, but that's something that's going to be up to the city commission in Charlotte or whoever takes Charlotte's place in the future. But it's, it's a complex situation, and just understand that we all have to be involved, but there are other stakeholders here that we're going to have to be sensitive to what their needs are also. Um, one of the biggest keys to this thing also is the boat show, as you know. The boat show has endorsed this concept. The lineal docks running north and south with the current is very important. It makes it easy for big boats to dock in there. The boat show is enthusiastic about it because it increases their big boat space. So those are important aspects of it. And the boat show has signed off that they don't have to have that parking lot as a staging area. They can stage in other locations. That's another important key component that affected the neighborhoods that's been solved, or at least verbally solved at this point. Um, beyond that, I don't know if there's anything else I can add. I'm right there at my time where I have to go to the airport. I apologize. Herb, who also sits on the Marine Advisory Board, is going to come up and, and if there's any questions he might be able to address but uh, if there's anything real quick that, that I might be able to answer for you please feel free to ask me now. We're doers and so I want you to hear Paul's information. He had his own, there's about three different configurations of how to do everything. I don't care whether it's Paul's, I don't care whether it's the advisory boards or it's the planners or it's the first, second, one, third ones we've seen, let's just have one. Let, let's just all say, let's have one. So I really like Paul, because I think he's done the majority of the heavy lifting on this issue to give you uh, what he's done, and I want you to take those home and read all of his ideas. And everything doesn't have to be done at one time. If we get the marina, if we get some of the, the boat show ideas, and if we later get a village, if we later get, you know, it took us six years to get two buoys and some landscaping. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I think it was a little over a year ago when I was reading the Sun Sentinel on a Saturday morning and I, and I got to the page and it said that uh, Las Olas was thinking about putting a parking lot and maybe adding on to the marina. And um, that really hit me really big because, you know, to think of prominent location like that and to think of a parking lot after, you know, the, the port has been enhanced, the airport and us carrying the prestigious title of being the capital of the world. I thought it'd be a shame to have a parking lot there, and I said, you know, it could happen. So I contacted Barry Flagg and, and I said, you know, what can we do about this? He said, well, I'm thinking about uh, coming with that into the marina. I said, well, what about the thoughts about some airplane? And maybe having a building for our industry. And he said, well, let's throw it against the wall. Well, I'm very pleased today to know that how far it's gone, uh, that it has been approved, that the city has embraced it. So th this is wonderful. This is wonderful news in about 10 months, how much has taken place, and, um, and that this is gonna be available to us. So now we gotta think about how to maximize um, the concept. Um, you know, it seems like our industry has been fragmented, and it is fragmented over the years. I think there's been times where we boasted 
an eight, uh, being an eighteen billion dollar industry in the state of Florida, maybe down, maybe down to twelve billion now, but I think it's hardly representative of our industry, twelve billion dollars, and for us to be here today um, and not having uh, a proper uh, boardroom to congregate in. So I, I, I thought that the Welcome Center could be the unifying factor that we're all looking for for our industry. I mean, the prestigious title of being the Yannick capital of the world, how many cities would love to have that? But we have so much here that's been overshadowed by a lot of other industries. But I think this is a perfect opportunity. Instead of a parking lot, to have a Welcome Center, to have something that will unify this fragmented industry, something that, that, that is glued to all the different components that make up our industry that we've never had. Somewhere to call home. I mean, right now, today, wouldn't it be great if we were down at Las Olas in a conference room with a nice view and really have the, uh, in the proper representation for our industry that we have some, you know, that we really can take pride in the industry that is a legitimate industry. Um, so I think this is where the concepts come from. Um, it, it also brings to mind, you know, education. I mean, we, you know, Broward Colleges uh, has always been knocking on the door in our industry and we have not had the ability, you know, to engage them, uh, probably because we have not really brought ourselves together. And I think we need the, this building, this welcome center, somewhere to operate out of, somewhere that will bring us a lot of pride. And, um, and, and I, th I think this is wonderful that's coming together. So when we think about the specifics, Right now, the Marine Advisory Board has taken the initiative to approach the city. They've done a wonderful job. You know, it looks like the marina's gonna be expanded. Um, but it's gonna be up to our, us, the trade organization and everybody in our industry, to give them the proper ideas on how to possibly maximize this effort. Uh, if this building uh, is gonna come together, we can't just not get involved and help them help us. They don't know our industry. Um, they don't know what we need. They don't know what ideas we all may come up with. But I think in, in principle, the idea is to maximize the full potential once and for all that the resources that exist for us and all the potential that is here that's never been united. This can do it. Um, the city of Fort Lauderdale should carry the title of being the Yachting capital of the world in a prestigious manner. It should come out as being sophisticated, educated, efficient and having the ability to work together out of one center to handle all the issues going forward all the green issues all of the uh all of the boat uh improvements engineering and all that we should have uh a, a, probably a, a museum here that's a possibility Broward college been looking for a curriculum uh for them to engage in and you know builders around the world would love to uh, provide their products for display at the yachting capital of the world. How, how hard would that be? So I think, I think a lot of this is available to us uh, and, and it is happening. Um, a lot of people may ask, well, what do we do now? Well, I think, you know, the, getting started is the hardest part. We have gotten started and uh, we're gonna approach our trade organization uh, to do a study and then to come up with the, the right information for all of us to contribute to and I think the idea at the end of the day is just to get it right and help ourselves, help the city. That's another uh, component in, uh, that's been a, probably not the level of engagement that could exist between the city and our industry. And I think this is a great opportunity for all of us to work together. Um, education, you know, the city, the county, uh, welcome yacht captains all over the world. Yacht captains are uh, very special. Um, they like to be welcomed, they like to be treated well, they like to be recognized. Uh, to bring in a yacht uh, from a foreign port after traveling long distances would be pretty great if we could uh, welcome them in a proper setting and uh, provide information. Uh, that would be very appropriate. That, that is something that I think will work very well for all of us. And um, I would just like to say today that um, you know, with the help of Jim also that was so pleased about this initiative that, that has gotten started. So it's already, it's already in, uh, in motion and uh, it's going to be up to us to finally have something that we can all pride ourselves with, unite, work together, 
and carry that prestigious title of the capital, the young capital of the world. Um, you know, with a marina and a building there, just you can just imagine how many conferences could take place. How many boat builders would probably lease out the marina and the property? Uh, how many conventions could take place there? Um, I mean, how how many tours could possibly visit if we do come up with a, a museum? So um, this is very very exciting. Um, I can't imagine that of anyone not supporting something like this. Um, you know, another component is we say, what about funding? All right, oh, we can't do it, there's no funding. Well, it just so happens that the consumers of our industry, the yacht owners, it's another component that we never have engaged. They have a huge amount of interest in their boats and their yachts and, and the buildings and engineering and all that. So there is, there is that donor society uh, capability that could, we could engage about enticing owners also to be part of this. They love their boats. They're working in some office all day long, and the you know what what brings them enjoyment is thinking about their boat and their next trip. I think they'll be more than willing to help us with some of their ideas, uh, possibly funding. Um, so I think this is all attainable. Um, this is a, this is the beginning today. We're going to try to communicate with everyone as much as we can, and uh, and moving forward. So if anybody would like to make any comments or. Ask anything, um, please do. Thank you. Yeah. Just make sure when you build a building that there's an office for Margaret to have as executive director. No, the Marine Industries Association already wants to know. Hey, Paul, Paul, I got a question. How does work out of my house. <laughs> How does this relate with what Palm Beach is trying to do up there with their welcome center? Right. Because Fort Lauderdale here it might have the title of the yachting capital of the world, but really that's not what's happening right now. We all know that, I guess I'm just the first one to say it, unless nobody else is thinking it. And a lot of the business that usually is here is going up there for one reason or another. And they're also trying to open up a welcome center up there as well. So that, to me, looks like, you know, Palm Beach, Fort Lauderdale, take your pick. Which one has the funding? Which one doesn't? You know, Junior's money up there, no money down here. I mean, am I off point or... No, you're actually, if, you, well, if I just, before you respond to it, if you go to Croxton's Clips, you'll see two stories that are all about Palm Beach. It's yeah. everything is about Palm Beach, everything's about Rybovich, everything, even Alan West is up there, uh, every senator's up there. It, when you read about it, Riviera Beach hopes to become the world player in service. Yep. I mean, all, we don't get this. I mean, you'd think that we didn't exist. This is one of my comments about reading all the bad news, and then all the good news is in Palm Beach, yeah. and so this is something that, that Paul is addressing, it's time for us to step up. Well, we've all been here many years. I mean, I've been here 25 plus years already in Fort Lauderdale, and I love Fort Lauderdale. I think it is the yachting capital of the world, but, you know, giving our new world and our new economy and everything that's going to Palm Beach, there is a concern there for me. Well, I, I spoke with Martin from the Super Yacht Report and um, about all of this, and there may be, you know, an added uh, venue for all of us here too. I mean, there may be a similar building in Europe, in Monaco or some uh, Antibes or something like that. There, there may be an opportunity to find, you know, a conduit between, you know, the Mediterranean and here. There are a lot of common interests. So I would, I would say that, it, you know, we definitely need to have one here. Uh, if somewhere else chooses to have some, somewhere else. Have at it, but I mean, you know, we're here. I've been here for 30 years. Fort Lauderdale is my home. It is to a lot of us. Uh, we can't stop anywhere else, anybody else from having one. But you know, all the components, you know, uh, and the title exists here in Fort Lauderdale now. And it's ours to lose. Uh, I, I think that there hasn't really had to be a lot of division. There could be venues to make it work out, or, or we could talk about it where they could have share some in some way, or or we can work together. I, I, I think we just need to have open debate about all of this, but one thing's for sure, there needs to be one here, and, and I think the very fact that maybe somebody's trying to take that title from us in the city of Fort Lauderdale, well, I think that should be recognized by the city officials, and that's a big decision, whether they're willing to relinquish this or not. I mean, uh, I, I know the, the port's important, I know the airport and all that, but, you know, the yachting cap of the world, what a, what a prestigious title, and look how many jobs it provides. Uh, I mean, um, so I think this is huge. It really is. It's finally here. We need to do it. And um, if somebody else does something, I, I think we just need to mine out, you know, to do our thing, and, and then uh, yeah, we can't stop them. That's exactly why we have to get behind it as individuals. I know there's big money there. You know, 
I've been around many, many years. <laughs> but you have and hair. sometimes, you know, the little guy, we'll consider ourselves the little guy, uh, you know, we can combat the competition. But let's not look at the, it's not a competitor. They're our friends. We want to work together. But we're concerned with this project here and now and the idea of this being the yachting capital of the world which I agree with some of the comments, it's become a lot of lip service. There's nothing tangible behind it. And what Paul's doing, Gene Douglas, Dean, they're, they're doing this. But let me tell you guys, they and girls, they cannot do this alone. I am real, you don't know, I'm a quiet guy, you don't hear me talk much about it. No, but I am so excited about this, I can't wait until there's a shack or something and I'm going to get over there and once in a while I come up with some good ideas and I'm going to try and put my two cents in there and I think everybody should hear. Uh, I want to mention one thing which a lot of people maybe don't remember. I believe it was in the 70s or the 80s. I don't know if Margaret. I was here in the 60s but, but and the El, 70s. Elmer Strauss. Yes. Does everybody know Elmer Strauss? Yeah, Dick Paul Sanders. Okay, Sanders. Elmer Strauss uh, is uh, still kicking. He's the owner of Boat Owners Warehouse, several other businesses. I think he still has a connection with cable. <clears throat> they he used to work for Miller Yacht Sales, he and George, George Cable. And they got a yacht, they went up to New England, and they put all kinds of banners on this. Did you know that? Yeah. yeah. They put all kinds of banners on this. Come to Fort Lauderdale. And they stopped at every single worthy boat yard and terminal they could and handed out brochures and follow us to Fort Lauderdale. And I thought that was great. Since then, that's 10, 20 years ago, nothing's really been done in that time. This is a follow-up of that, is the way I see it. And I think we have to really, really, really get behind us. I got a little joke about some bagels later I can tell you about worrying about the other competitors. <laughs> if you want to hear the joke, anybody yes, want to hear the joke? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, there was this fellow and he had this little bagel shop. And across the street there was another guy who had a bagel shop. So he called the rabbi and he says, you know, I don't understand this, he says. I'm working day and night here. And the guy across the street, I keep watching him and watching him. He's got more business coming in there. And the rabbi says to him, he says, my son, very simple, he says. You're running two businesses, yours and his. He's only running one business. <laughs> And that's what we have to do. Don't worry about Palm Beach. Worry about Fort Lauderdale. Worry about the yachting capital of the world. And everybody participate in this. Of course, this is a winner. And I think this is probably the greatest thing that Margaret has done, I've done, Keith, anybody who's involved. This is something that we can really get our hands on. And we will be known as the uh, boating capital of the world. Good morning, everybody. First, I'd just like to say that, you know, I got to congratulate everybody who's here. Um, I think everybody is really involved and really cares about this industry and is really moving it forward. And I also really got to thank the guys with the, uh, with the advisory board for this marina. Very, very visionary. Um, although, the other thing that I would say is there has been a lot of progress. Um, you know, we are in, continue to be in the midst of the Great Recession. And obviously, unless it rained 40 days and 40 nights, people don't need what we sell. Um, people don't have to have a boat. Um, I think that this La Solis Marina is interesting because when I first came to Fort Lauderdale back in 1986, I remember the rickety old wooden docks with pilings that were down there at the La Solis docks small boats, and then I don't remember exactly what year, I'm sure Jim knows exactly, but they made that really nice improvement that we currently have down there. 
now this is the next step. So there is progress. There's a lot of good things happening. And in large part, it's due to people that are in this room and people who have worked in the past. People such as Quay Shaw, who worked diligently in, uh, in uh, Washington, D.C. for the marine industry. And one of the things that he did certainly was uh, he blessed us with the Quay Shaw Bridge. Even though he was looking for a tunnel, uh, there was discussion back and forth. We ended up with a great, great view as you pass over the 17th Street Causeway. It doesn't snarl the traffic anywhere near what it used to, and excellent progress. A few years ago, the uh, Florida Yacht Brokers Association decided that they were going to really work to remove barriers to commerce. Uh, we partnered with Marine Industries of South Florida, Marine Industries of Florida, Margaret gave us the venue here on a number of times, and we got the sales tax cap on boats passed. It's working, it's moving things forward. Back in, I believe it was 1993, um, Michael Shula, working for Boat US, actually came up with the concept of putting the diesel road tax back into a boating trust fund. Um, up in Congress, they just recently passed the transportation bill, and I'm glad to hear that uh, our boating trust fund remains in there. So there are some funds for projects as we go forward and as we come up with additional ideas. Uh, Margaret had mentioned the, uh, the hearing that was up in Washington, D.C. I'm sure uh, many of you have read about it, and many of you have followed it closely, uh, but uh, Ellen West had offered a venue uh, at a congressional hearing to discuss the sinking marine industry. <coughs> and uh, there were four people who actually testified in person, and he also offered up the opportunity to provide written testimony. <coughs> the Florida Yacht Brokers Association decided that uh, one of the th uh, ideas that we continue to move forward with are state and federal issues to remove barriers to commerce. Uh, and the one that we're working on, on a federal basis, that uh, actually Quay Shaw, going back to him, we started on, was the boat show bond. And the boat show bond has worked terrific. It's an opportunity for boats to come to the United States that have not paid duty and be offered for sale uh, at the boat show specifically. We would like to expand that boat show bond. We would like to op give the opportunity for boats to be offered for sale uh, under a bond without paying the duty first. This would be used boats only. Uh, and we believe that by doing so, we can attract a lot more boats to the United States and to South Florida. Um, I heard a number of people conversing this morning as far as the uh, us versus them, Palm Beach versus uh, Fort Lauderdale, and obviously, uh, you know, as a resident of Fort Lauderdale, I have a real vested interest in the Fort Lauderdale, but I think we have to look at the bigger picture. We have to throw out the welcome mat with a combination of things like this marina. We have to throw out the welcome mat in terms of removing barriers to commerce. We have to have infrastructure like the 17th Street Bridge. Maybe someday down the road we'll be talking about how they change the, uh, the I-95 into a tunnel. Um, and we no longer have that uh, barrier for boats to get up to the other side of the 95, west of 95. Who knows what happens? Uh, I, I certainly can't imagine a, a drawbridge on 95. I'm sure that would be a, a disaster of biblical proportions. Uh, but in any event, um, who knows what brings forward other than the the uh, work that people like such as yourselves actually do to actually uh, make a change in infrastructure and public policy. So um, with that, I would just like to also mention uh, the Florida Yacht Brokers Association is, has one other item on their agenda, and that is to allow boats, this is a state issue, uh, currently boats that come to the United States or can actually come to Florida from anywhere in the United States or the world, um, if they were offered for sale, they must be under a care custody and control um, for, by a yacht broker to make them exempt from use tax. Florida Yacht Brokers Association believes that uh, the current process is that uh, what happens is as a boat comes here, 
if an owner is told that he can't make personal use of his boat, he may not actually come. Uh, and so we would like to make a modification to that. We've actually done a fair amount of work to that end in this next legislative session. We will be working towards the process of actually making a central listing bond, giving owners the opportunity to make some personal use of their vessels while it's offered for sale under the exemption of the central listing bond. So uh, with that, um, I don't know if anybody has any questions. I'm always kind of a nuts and bolts guy. I, I go on and on a bit too much, but uh, in any event, I, I appreciate everybody's uh, assistance and help, and uh, does anybody have any questions? I'll go with Dan. I'll go with one Joe finishes. Okay. Thank you, Johnny. I want to make sure I got the 9.30 Joe Rubano rule, because we do leave on time. I'm going to have Mayor Noggle, once a mayor, always a mayor, and he was there so long we should call him Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Uh, we wish you were there. Uh, I noticed Charlotte Rogers on well, so I guess I can say that. The mayor who's there currently, Jack Siler, uh, started off by saying this was never going to happen. I, I, I can't imagine that when you were there, you would have said, this is never going to happen. He has changed and has been brought on board, and I think that's great, but we, we really need people that you have been saying it for the 20 or 30 years I've known you there, that somehow they just think this is a new idea. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Margaret. And I'm going to be very brief because uh, Bob Dean did such a great job and uh, Paul and, and Joe. I, I just wanted to mention that when, if you look at this chart that was handed out and you see the green that's just to the east of the docks, back in the 1960s, that's where the bulkhead was. And today, and then, and then back, the city commission back then built, it, it built the parking lot. So the area that we're talking about originally was wet, and uh, the city put the parking lot in there. When I was appointed to the city's Marine Advisory Board back in the 1970s, I was the chairman of the committee that did the, the rickety docks that Jeff referred to. Uh, there were no docks before that, and we had tremendous opposition from the Venetian condominium back then about having the docks there. And uh, on a three to two vote, the city commission did vote to put the docks in there. Later on, we're expanding them. <clears throat> and the great real estate boom of the, of the aughts, the early aughts from 2000 to 2006, the city commission on a three to two vote voted to allow a condominium uh, development on the site. And um, I, I voted no. Um, the, in the next election, those politicians that voted for the big condo development there were thrown out of office. We were able to reverse the vote and uh, end the lawsuit and now the, the property is available for to do something with and and uh, Paul Barry Flanagan has been relentless on this about getting getting that uh, done and he's really to be commended so I think it's great the welcome center and, and just it's going to take everybody in the room to to see that uh, come forward and to convince the politicians that it's necessary thank you for I, inviting I put me you on, I put you on the panel to tell us how to get to this city commission, how to get to the county commission. I think this is a county issue. Um, I mean, Fort Lauderdale, uh, Fort Lauderdale Beach, unfortunately, isn't just Fort Lauderdale Beach. It's, it's very kind. How do we, and I'm a lobbyist, so I'll take your advice. How, you know, I used to tell me how to get to you, and I used to know who I could talk to and ask. Um, and, and we've sort of heard the tone that I've been saying for 35 or 40 years that uh, we really don't tell our story well enough. How do we get to, what's the plan? How do we get to this commission? How do we get this to happen? Other than we all sit here and vote for it and say we love it. Well, I, I remember I used to have a, a, a gentleman that used to come to me and complain all the time. His daughters played soccer and there wasn't enough uh, uh, soccer fields for, for the, the, uh, the girls to have the competitive soccer. And so I put him on the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. <laughs> <laughs> you put me on, they put me on code compliance. And that shut so when, when anybody would complain to me, I'd always put him on a board. <laughs> Has anybody ever watched a, a snail go up a window pane or something? Or just sit there and watch it? That snail is a race car compared to the, what the government did. <laughs> <laughs> And, yes. and everything is so simple, but just getting involved, you know, offering to serve on the city's <coughs> advisory board or, or um, committees and the county, getting people on the county, just kind of pack all those committees because the environmental nuts get on there and they try to shoot everything down. So you just, it's a constant battle, it really is. And, and you know what, getting involved in campaigns for these politicians, uh, 
really does help early on. You know, back to you know, sit in the room and say, all right, you you guys back that one, and I'll back that one, and then we'll know who to ask for what we want once they get elected. Well, it's, it's true. And well, okay. well, I'm glad that we uh, have a summertime August off, and it's been you know good in the past, and it's good. So we're looking forward to seeing you in September, and uh, have a nice vacation. Good. Thank you very much for coming.